food deficit food surplus regions nutritional index there is a mounting world food shortage problem in many areas around the globe the world economy is in such turmoil that this could easily cause a situation where world food shortage become a widespread global issue people who do not have enough money to purchase food for themselves and their family often get stuck in their situation they do not have enough money or resources to improve their situation though creating businesses or securing higher paying jobs the market system is not enough to provide all people with foods the primary problem with markets are the lack of access to markets in rural areas poor transportation routes waste due to poor storage and corrupt middlemen and prices that neither the producers nor the consumers can afford of the roughly 7 billion people in the world an estimated 870 million suffer each day from hunger that's hunger from malnutrition or not eating even the lowest amount of daily recommended calories 1800 while often enduring food insecurity or not knowing where the next meal is coming from the consistently massive population of hungry people along with variables like severe weather and economic downturns sometimes spark warnings that the planet faces impending food shortages and eight more people in the world 1.7 billion are considered obese or overweight from a daily caloric intake that in some cases is at least 6 to 7 times the minimum this paradox is nothing new it just shows the problem isn't that we have too little food it is what we do with the food we have in this lesson let us examine the factors for food deficit food surplus and what is the nutrition index from the following headings influence on food availability inadequate food distribution system food surplus regions nutrition index india state hunger index influences on food availability and distribution many factors impact significantly on food availability and distribution both locally and around the world each individual factor can disrupt supply or distribution chains however in situations where two or more factors affect food availability the outcome can be devastating enough food is produced in the world to feed everyone however the availability varies enormously the amount of food produced in many developing countries is insufficient to feed the population and they may experience severe food shortages many areas around the world are unsuitable to produce crops there can be many reasons for this and can include remote or inaccessible locations mountainous countryside poor soil for crops and also extreme weather the countries that are unable to grow crops rely on imported foods and good transportation channels to supply the population's food needs climate change is already bringing unpredictable weather patterns at unseasonable times damaging crops which is leading countries to become more dependent on imported foods rising sea levels threaten to flood low lying crops and can reduce the availability of safe drinking water along with climate and weather there are also natural disasters that can lead to food shortages this occurs when mostly hit with flood or drought individuals and communities during this time are forced to rely on aid organizations to provide food aid drought is the most common natural cause and prime contributor to famine in arid and semi arid regions another major problem that needs to be addressed 
is the extent of waste that occurs post-harvest and during transport. Most of the produce is very perishable. It is susceptible to bacteria, insects and fungus that rot the food and contaminate it with disease, rendering the food inedible. It is estimated that 25% to 50% of all food produce is wasted. In India, about 7% annually of grain and 30% of fruit and vegetables produced are wasted due to the lack of proper storage systems, says Murthy, 2010. Because of the volume of wasted food, a shortage occurs. This shortage severely increases the prices for the consumers but does not increase the income of the farmers that originally sell the crop. Therefore, the incomes of the producers are either stagnant or decreasing, perpetuating the poverty and hunger cycles. To reduce this waste, we propose a solution to increase the storage and shelf life of the foods as outlined in our food storage system. Even with full access to markets, many people cannot buy food because they cannot afford the costs. Consumers cannot purchase enough food to feed themselves and their families due to the lack of purchasing power and low incomes. Many farmers fail to generate an adequate return on their crops, meaning they are unable to earn a sustainable income to pay off their investments. A community's religious and cultural beliefs often dictate many daily practices within the group. Cultures and religions link us to certain ideals and traditions. This regards the way one would live their life, the actions they performed and also the foods they ate. The cultural and religious beliefs of a group may also dictate what type of foods the people in that group can have. Food constitutes a basic element in the cultural identity of urban migrants. They tend to preserve some of the typical eating habits of their region of origin. There is, therefore, diversity in the eating habits which influences the choice of local processed produce used by households in preparing traditional meals. Inadequate Food Distribution Systems Enough food is produced worldwide to feed all the people in the world. However, despite this alarming truth, nearly 1 billion people are suffering from chronic hunger today. There are a wide range of factors that contribute to this problem. But perhaps one of the most significant is poor food distribution. Amount of food produced, how much used, and how much received. The amount of food calories being produced fulfills and exceeds the minimum amount needed per person. However, because of waste and loss, the amount of food calories available for consumption falls short of that minimum. The goal of food distribution is not only to connect the producers such as farmers and fishermen to consumers, but also to allocate the food accordingly. Challenges arise in deciding how the food will be distributed among the people who have the power of distribution and what methods should be used for distribution. The establishment of markets in which producers directly sell their food to consumers is the most traditional method of distribution. However, due to many cases of inefficiency, Food is usually transported to a central location and then distributed to outer cities and villages. Consumers have difficulty purchasing food because of their inability to access markets and or their inability to afford the costs. On the other hand, farmers cannot sell their produce for the similar reasons. Therefore, the main problems with the current distribution system are the lack of markets, the inadequacy of transportation to markets and the inability to afford the costs of production and consumption. In our current system of food distribution, the number of markets and the ways to access those markets is inadequate. About 16% of the rural population in developing countries lack 
convenient access to a market which typically causes farmers not to sell their crops. In fact, it is estimated that at most 40% of any crop is marketed and only one-third of farmers sell to markets, World Hunger Series. To increase both farmers and consumers' access to markets, we developed the concept of mobile markets, a market on a locomotive that will travel between various rural areas and cities. In developing nations, transportation is often very limited. There are very few quality roads or railways to transport goods and people to the centralized markets. Transportation routes are expensive and almost exclusively require public funding and public maintenance. Poorly maintained roads are a huge problem in many regions, particularly in rural areas where the poor roads make an area inaccessible and delay any movement of goods. One issue with transportation is the extremely variable geography and climate in each region. Each type of transportation is more effective in certain areas than in others, so solutions must be formed on a local level by critically examining the geography as well as the available resources of the regions. The root causes of poor distribution include the lack of infrastructure such as markets and transportation routes, unsustainable prices driven by corruption and waste, inefficiency in markets and poverty. Our solution focus on reducing these factors to create a world in which all have access to food at affordable prices. Food Surplus and Food Surplus Regions Hunger is widespread, especially in developing countries. Food crises often occur in the poorest countries and even communities in the most developed parts of the world deal with health problems related to lack of food like malnutrition in children. But the world's food supply is not at the root of the problem, rather it is what is done with it. In fact, food production in terms of cereals is at far greater productive capacity than it's ever been in the past. See also FAO cereal supply and demand brief. There is more than enough food to go around. Even as the global population gets bigger and more people demand a varied diet as many people living in more developed countries do. Because of the technological means in place for planting and harvesting food, there are often surpluses, especially in richer countries, but food is often wasted. Instead of becoming more conservative and conscious of the food resources available, many nations have become overly consumerist and wasteful. 1.2 to 2 billion tons of all food produced ends up as waste, which is 30% to 50% of total food production in the world. And it is not only a waste of food, but a waste of energy, water and other resources that go into producing it. In the meantime, while there is a global food surplus taking place, there is still starvation in developing countries throughout the world. Many people are not getting enough to eat and the main contributor is a large-scale social problem that no one can seem to tackle fully, that is poverty. The food surpluses in North America and Europe result mainly from subsidies and other incentives that stimulate production even in the absence of demand. Sub-Saharan Africa is also an agricultural region that has significant trade surplus in all agriculture. At least a third of the US wheat crop went uncounted a decade ago. India ranks near the top among third world agricultural exporters. While at least 200 million Indians go hungry, in 1995, India exported $625 million worth of wheat and flour. 
Beginning with its famine of early 1970s, Bangladesh came to symbolize the frightening consequences of people overrunning food resources. Brazil exported more than $13 billion worth of food in 1994, second among developing countries. 70 million Brazilians cannot afford to eat. There are countries that will lose out because of adverse weather conditions induced by climate change, such as those in North Africa, where it is likely to have the worst impact. Nutrition Index The Access to Nutrition Index is a new global initiative that evaluates food and beverage manufacturers on their policies, practices and performance related to obesity and undernutrition. By providing companies with a tool for benchmarking their nutrition practices and serving as an impartial source of information for interested stakeholders, ATNI aims to encourage companies to increase consumer access to nutritious products and responsibly exercise their influence on consumer choice and behavior. The Access to Nutrition Index or ATNI is founded on the premise that food and beverage manufacturers can make a strong contribution to addressing poor nutrition and related diseases. By accessing and ranking 25 of the world's largest manufacturers on their nutrition-related commitments, practices and performance globally, ATNI aims to encourage companies to increase consumer access to nutritious and affordable foods and beverages through actions related to product formulation, pricing and distribution, and responsibly exercising their influence on consumer choice and behavior through actions in areas such as marketing, labeling, and promoting healthy diets and active lifestyles. ATNI seeks to stimulate dialogue about ways in which companies can improve their nutrition practices by serving as a means for companies to benchmark their approach to nutrition against their peers and identify areas for improvement. An independent source of information for stakeholders interested in monitoring and or engaging with the food and beverage industry on nutrition issues. Through these paths of influence, ATNI aims to encourage companies to increase consumer access to nutritious products and responsibly exercise their influence on consumer choice and behavior. The ultimate goal is to facilitate improved diets and a reduction in the serious global problems of both obesity and undernutrition. During the process of developing the current methodology, the ATNI expert group identified multiple areas deemed to be important in accessing companies' influence on consumers' nutritional status. These areas form a knowledge agenda consisting of issues that require further work by interested stakeholder groups. The issues that make up this knowledge agenda include greater clarity on what constitutes a robust nutrient profiling system and movement towards a consensus gold standard, a standard format in which to report product reformulation efforts which allows an understanding of the scope of such efforts and comparison of companies' efforts. Research on how pricing affects low-income consumers' purchasing decisions of healthier products. Development of a rigorous, transparent and methodologically reliable on-the-ground assessment of breast milk substitute manufacturers' marketing practices. Characterization of how individual companies affect the food consumption environment, for instance, through their marketing activities or labeling practices, and development of metrics that capture these impacts. Assessment of companies' role in encouraging food safety, for example, through efforts such as package labeling systems that provide transparency in the production of food 
or educate consumers on appropriate ways to prepare foods at home to ensure their safety. Guidelines for and methods to access company performance on responsibility. Commercial sports sponsorship. Nutrition education or more broadly support of healthy diet and active lifestyles. Marketing to adolescents. In addition, the following issues are specific to undernutrition. Characterization of food purchasing patterns among consumers in markets with a significant burden of undernutrition so as to better understand the role played by processed foods in their diets. Role of fortification of packaged foods in the context of broader national fortification strategies. Appropriate role for food and beverage companies in interventions other than fortification to address undernutrition. Guidelines for the responsible marketing of foods, particularly for those being sold in markets with a burden of undernutrition where guidance is less well developed, including complementary foods. India State Hunger Index The India State Hunger Index, ISHI, is a tool to calculate hunger and malnutrition at the regional level in India. It is constructed in the same fashion as the Global Hunger Index, GHI, 2008, and was calculated for 17 states in India, covering more than 95% of the population. The ISHI was developed by the International Food Policy Research Institute or IFPRI and presented for the first time 2008 in conjunction with the non-governmental organization Well Thunger Health and the Department of Economics, University of California. Despite the good economic performance, with over 200 million people who are food insecure, India is home to the largest number of hungry people in the world. In the ranking of the Global Hunger Index 2008, it covers position 66 out of 88 ranked countries and has an alarming 23.7 food security situation. The major problem in the country is a high prevalence of underweight children under 5, which is a result of low nutrition and educational status of women. While there has been attention to hunger and undernourishment at the central level, within India's political system, states are important political units with regard to the planning and execution of development programs. Thus, Unpacking the hunger index at the level of the federal states is an important tool to build awareness of the disparities in hunger among them. In addition, the variability of the relative contribution of the underlying components of the hunger index across the different Indian states can help to stimulate the discussion about the drivers of hunger in different state contexts. The ISHI is constructed in the same fashion as a Global Hunger Index which follows a multidimensional approach to measuring hunger and malnutrition. It combines three equally weighted indicators. The proportion of undernourished as a percentage of the population, reflecting the share of the population with insufficient dietary intake. The prevalence of underweight children under the age of 5, that is, indicating the proportion of children suffering from weight loss and or reduced growth. The mortality rate of children under the age of 5 or partially reflecting the fatal synergy between dietary intake and unhealthy environments. India ranks low on nutrition index. India has shown efficient economic progress over the years, yet it is not able to provide the nutritional enhancement which the country is in dire need of. As per the Nutrition Barometer report, 
India inhibits about 70% of children and women with malnutrition conditions like anemia and others. The sources also show that about half of Indian children are underweight and their growth is stunted due to poor diet. The Nutrition Barometer Report is a survey conducted by Save the Children and World Vision, which was recently released at the World Economic Forum. The nutritional data shows a large level of inequality in the social groups in the country. The children from the impoverished background show twice the stunted growth than the children from other social strata. Even the poor amenities, 20% of the wealthiest population shows that one in five children are undernourished as stated by the report. The country's performance as a whole on the nutrition barometer is seen as the outcome of poor commitments. The food crisis is a very complex problem with many causes. The specific problems are unique to each region and none are easy to solve. The effects of malnourishment are equally complex. The major contributor to undernourishment is poverty. People who do not have enough money to purchase food for themselves and their family often get stuck in their situation. The market system is not enough to provide all people with foods. The primary problems with markets are the lack of access to markets in rural areas, poor transportation routes, waste due to poor storage and corrupt middlemen, and prices that neither the producers nor the consumers can afford. As food surpluses will continue in other parts of the world, the demand for food will likely increase which needs to be addressed in order for mass starvation to be mitigated. There are many methods proposed, example, stop wasting so much food and studied currently that are expected to help alleviate starvation and malnutrition. The Access to Nutrition Index is a new global initiative that evaluates food and beverage manufacturers on their policies, practices and performance related to obesity and undernutrition. It provides a tool for benchmarking their nutrition practices and serving as an impartial source of information for interested stakeholders. India has shown efficient economic progress over the years, yet it is not able to provide the nutritional enhancement which the country is in dire need for. As per the Nutrition Barometer report, India inhabits about 70% of children and women with malnutrition conditions like anemia and others.